following is a production of DallasCowboys.com and the Dallas Cowboys Football Club. How about them, Cowboys? Yeah! This is Talkin' Cowboys. Streaming live from the Dallas Cowboys World Headquarters at the Star in Frisco. Hand off, Elliott plowing to the goal line. Barry sacked by Lord. Prescott keeps it, and he bangs it in for the touchdown. And now your hosts, Isaiah Stanback, Heckma Harrison, Rob Phillips, and Kyle Yeomans. It's a Wednesday edition of Talking Cowboys, week four, episode three, here on DallasCowboys.com and our various streaming platforms. Glad you're with us as we get you ready for Browns Week inside the Star in Frisco here in the SWBC Mortgage Studios. I'm Kyle Yeomans alongside Rob Phillips, Heckma Harrison, and the great Isaiah Stanback. Gentlemen, it's been quite the couple of days. There's been some, uh, some more Twitter drama. We're not going to get into it. We're going to talk about uh, the football side of things, previewing the Browns offense and Jarvis Landry, Odell Beckham Jr., and this entire Cleveland high-powered attack, <laughs> Nick Chubb, uh, going up against this pretty decimated Cowboys defense coming up in just a little bit. But, Rob, uh, I, I know there's been a couple of additions or at least workouts that the Cowboys have uh, put on the table this week and, and some roster moves. Players off yesterday. We don't have an injury report yet. That's kind of the disadvantage, I guess, that we have as a show in terms of going so early in the morning. We don't get to see the injury report, but what have you heard in terms of some of the ins and outs of this Cowboys roster moving into week four? Well, I think the big one is Tyron Smith and what he might do today. Uh, Mike McCarthy said in his press conference on Monday that it sounded optimistic he might get some work in today. We'll see if that happens. Obviously, he hasn't practiced in almost two weeks. And, or basically two weeks was the last time we saw him out there uh, after he hurt the neck uh, and had, had the stingers he's dealing with. So that's the big one to keep an eye on. Uh, you mentioned roster moves. The Cowboys uh, made an alteration to their practice squad yesterday on the offensive line with regard to probably Smith and, and Lyle Collins still dealing uh, with an injury on IR. Jordan Mills, which – a veteran guy that's, you know, because of the new rules, you're able to bring in a veteran guy on the practice squad. And uh, he's a guy that's been in the league for six, seven years, has 84 career starts at tackle. So some more insurance there. And they had an open spot because Rondell Carter, a highly touted undrafted mm-hmm. rookie that they brought in after the draft, uh, is off to the Colts active roster. So trying to beef up that O-line just in case. I mean, it doesn't sound – it sounds um, – not great about Lyle Collins. Yeah. You know, I'm not sure what his status is going to be going forward. Yeah, there was a lot of uncertainty around Lyle Collins yesterday, both Stephen Jones and Mike McCarthy on Monday, saying that they just don't really know. And then Jerry kind of echoed that on his Tuesday interview with Sean and RJ, saying, I don't know what's going on with, with Lyle Collins. The training staff doesn't know. It's really kind of a curious case moving forward. But, heck, Mo, whenever you look at some of the additions that the Cowboys are going to have to make, They've really addressed the offensive offensive line rather by taking Mills and, and putting him on a practice squad. He's not necessarily going to be somebody to look for right now. It's still going to rely on Brandon Knight. You're still going to ri- rely on Terrence Steele. But is this a guy moving into maybe week five, week six that you could potentially see in that rotation at the tackle spot? I think just the experience alone, Kyle, gives me a promise that this guy can come in and and do a good job for us. When you look at a a NFL season, all of it with injuries and all of that, the Cowboys are just trying to find the best fit for this team in case guys are not able to go. So uh, I I like the move. I hate that we lost a guy for the practice squad that seemed like a young defender that may have had some promise, but that's just the way that it is with all 32 teams. We're looking at everyone's practice squad and, and guys that are in active uh, to see if there's a trade that can be made or if you could pluck a guy from another team's practice squad. Mm-hmm. Isaiah, do you think that's kind of the move and the, the thought process here in terms of bringing in Jordan Mills? Just groom a guy for a little bit, replace the practice squad spot of Rondell Carter, which I'll give you a little insight here in a second. But whenever it comes to, to this offensive line, just trying to find some kind of ep- extra depth anywhere you can. I mean, it's all about you know, adding assets, right? I mean, as the general manager of a National Football League team, your job is to acquire um, the most amount of talent possible underneath your salary cap. That's the facts. You want to assemble the most efficient, 
uh, team possible. And I think this is just them doing their due diligence. And it would be negligent of them if they did not continue to add depth and competition at certain positions. Um, obviously, there is a competitive uh, – it's a, it's an open competition right now seemingly at at the tackle position. So why not continue to add, uh, add some more depth there? And if there's somebody who can push somebody in practice, then, hey, there you go. It's all better for the team. You know, I knew the name sounded familiar, guys, because he – he came through the Cowboys roster for like a week mm. when they had some some depth issues at tackle back in 2015. And he's been the Bills starting right tackle for a few years, so he's played in the league. Um, and, you know, Cam Irving's another guy you got to mention because Lyle's still on IR, so is Cam Irving. And he might be on there for another few weeks uh, with the sprained knee. So they've, like, like Isaiah said, like Heck said, just have another asset there. You know, you've already shuffled your line a little bit at the tackle position. You're hoping to get Tyron back, but we'll see what they do at right tackle. I mean, they thrived with Zach Martin out there. I don't know if they want to continue to do that, mm-hmm. but they're awfully young beyond that uh, that insurance policy. We talked about the potential of having Zach Martin out at right tackle and keeping the best five offensive linemen on the field. And uh, I think maybe this prevents you from doing so moving forward. You might still see it in week four, like I said. He's not. He's on the practice squad. He may be called up for the game, but with a guy coming off the streets out of free agency, you don't necessarily expect him to make an immediate impact. As for the position on the practice squad in which he's filling Rondell Carter, the uh, edge rusher out of James Madison undrafted, free agent. Uh, I really liked Rondell Carter coming out of the draft. I was kind of surprised he wasn't taken uh, in the in the actual draft process. His signing bonus uh, absolutely showed that. One of the, the, the biggest signing bonus out of all of the undrafted free agents on the Cowboys side of things. But he's plucked up off of the practice squad by the Indianapolis Colts. A 6'3", 270 pound lineman and somebody I really thought had a chance to maybe make some noise. I think the reinstatement of Randy Gregory maybe uh, stifled his chance to, to finally make it after af- active roster. Plus, I, I wasn't necessarily encouraged by his training camp. I thought he was outdone by uh, fellow undrafted free agent Ladarius Hamilton. I thought Hamilton had a better training camp and I thought Carter was a li- left a little to be desired, but the Colts certainly found something they liked and they plucked him up off the practice squad. Now, Looking ahead here to week four, Cleveland Browns coming in 2-1 and one on the season. The Cowboys, of course, at 1-2. and two. This is going to be a matchup that a lot of Cowboys fans have had circled as the get-right game. Such a tough schedule leading into the year whenever you talk about three straight teams that, well, uh, the only loss that the Rams have had was a, a nail-biter loss to the Bills. You talk about Atlanta. That's a team that right now should be 2-1. and one. It might be the best 0-3 team I've seen in a long time. Uh, the fact that they're two and one, or they're not two and one, is kind of the weirdest zero cri- and three team ever. It's kind of criminal on on that side of things. And then you have, of course, the Seattle Seahawks, who a lot of people believe are one of the favorites in the NFC. But now you get this quote unquote get right game for the Cowboys. Isaiah, that's not necessarily what this is. This is a Cleveland team that's not your normal Cleveland team going into this week. Absolutely not. Um, I think in recent years, you could, you know, everybody brings up the Cleveland Browns. They're like, oh, we got a second bye week. Um, that's, that's not the case. We know <laughs> Cleveland has been working hard um, trying to figure this thing out for the last, I would say, about five years. Right? They've been shuffling around coaches. They've been acquiring, you know, all these offseason acquisitions and free agents. Um, they've been trying to develop Baker Mayfield. So they have been working diligently uh, to try to assemble a team that can go out there and put together wins. And it seems as if they might have found a little something with the squad that they have this mm-hmm. year, as they are now what two and one. Um, they are they are they have a very well respected offense. Their defense has been respected for a number of years now. So I mean, this is not this is not the easy game that you that you would like to see on your schedule. Um, get excited about, especially coming off of uh, you know a, a loss here against Seattle. You know that movie Draft Day with with Kevin Costner, yeah. And they were just the it was like it was like truth stranger than fiction kind of thing where they were really they were just much maligned and no, they had a first pick for years. It's that's not the case anymore. I think they're two and one for the first time since 2014. Something yeah, like they're that. above crazy. above 500 crazy. for the first time since December of 2014. And just to get an idea of how long ago that was. Johnny Manziel was the starting quarterback the next week. It was his debut the week after they were one game above 500. So it's been quite some time. Oh, Johnny. 
Johnny Manziel. Sorry, I had to throw that in there at you, Rob. <laughs> well, thank you. <laughs> Heck, man. No, when it when it comes yes, when it comes down to the Browns and, and Isaiah, you're back in you're back in the uh, Isaiah Standback Studios there, and I can <laughs> and I can hear you boil in the water for what you're about to cook up for. What are you, about? <laughs> <laughs> you got the hey, he got the big spoon out. He's getting ready to serve this dish. Look, the Browns have been a dumpster fire for years, and it, yeah. you look no further than the fact that they've had what six general managers in, in nine years, and. Yeah. Uh, all of the coaching, ch- the coaching changes and things that have happened. And I think Coach Kevin Stefanski is a, is a young gun co- coach that's going to be on the rise. But he has benefited from the fact that he hasn't had any preseason games. And a lot of people don't realize what he's going to do with Baker Mayfield. He came into this knowing that he had to cure this uh, third-year quarterback that last year, man, he just, it was dismal. Uh, The turnover to touchdown ratio was really bad uh, for the Browns last year that had uh, the 10th round pick in the draft because they finished 6-10. and And so the things that they have done, and I'll just point to the fact that, yes, offensive line-wise, they have, they have, gotten some better guys and shored up that right tackle position with Conklin Mm -hmm. um, and Jedrick Willis, the left tackle out of Alabama. But the Dallas Cowboys are going to have a lot of opportunity versus the Cleveland Browns because the Cleveland Browns, they like to load up and do that student body right, student body left with Nick Chubb, with Chubb. And uh, look, it's just we're just going to be in a situation if this is a get right game, then we have the perfect opponent to get right because they're not going to throw a lot of sophisticated, sophisticated formations at us. And they're also not going to throw the ball nearly as much as the first three games of the season as well. I mean, we're not out here looking at Jared Goff, Russell Wilson, and Matt Ryan in week four. You're looking at a dual-headed backfield, which hopefully your defensive line is up to the challenge to stop. I haven't seen anything truly worrisome in terms of stopping the run the first three weeks, maybe with the exception of Malcolm Brown in week one uh, in that three-headed offense that we saw from uh, the Rams' perspective. But overall, the, the trouble has been stopping throwing the football. But do you expect maybe Baker Mayfield to let it loose a little bit more and try and get it into the playmakers of Jarvis Landry and Odell Beckham Jr. Rob, as we head into week four just based off of the fact that that's where the Cowboys are susceptible? You know, that's a good question. I know yesterday you asked us what concerns you most about their offense, and I think I think Heck and I said the receivers yeah. and, and covering their receivers, and that's that's obvious with, with Beckham and Jarvis Landry. But after watching them a little bit on Game Pass yesterday in the All-22, I mean, I'm with Isaiah now. I think it's got to be they've got to hone in on their run game and be able to stop them from going downhill because that's what they want to do. They don't, they don't want um, – they don't want Baker to cook. They don't want the let Russ cook thing going in Cleveland. They <laughs> oh, want, no. They want, they want balanced offense. They want to establish the run, and they want to get some play action going. And where they've had trouble is when they've gotten in third and longs, um, and, and, and Baker's forced to really just make something happen, and sometimes he'll, he'll do something impulsively. And I, I think they had an interception on their first series of the season against Baltimore. They got blown out by Baltimore, and it was a third and long situation. Um, so – they want to establish the run, and that's – I'm with you, Kyle. I think overall they've done pretty solid against the run Dallas has defensively. Mm-hmm. Uh, but Chubb is a guy that's just going to move the chains. I mean, he had more 10-yard runs than anybody in the league last year. And Zeke, I think, was third. Uh, but but he's going to continue moving the chains. And Hunt is such an interesting player because he can he can be that compliment in the running game or they can they can put him out wide and he can, do, and he can hurt you there too. Yeah, that's the, that's going to definitely be the challenge with those two running backs. And, and, and Rob, again, that's the Kevin Stefanski's cure for Baker Mayfield is setting up that run game for him and making sure that he's throwing short yards passes. I mean, they're doing slants, nine routes, out routes, curls, things that are just easy for him. Those slow developing plays that they had last year that just killed his QBR, I think they've pretty much x made those things out of the playbook for him. Yeah. Isaiah? Yeah, man. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, no, Hex. <laughs> Hex. Here we go. Yeah. <laughs> hey. All I'm going to say is make, Dallas needs to respect this team. Dallas really needs to respect this team. I have been on teams. I've been in organizations. I've been in seasons where you have looked past opponents and opponents come in there and 
bush you and your dog on mouth. Mm-hmm. Um, I was in New England in, in 2000, that was 2010, when we played, we had a first round by and then all of a sudden we played Baltimore. Baltimore comes in and we're like, all right, they're a good team, but you know, we're, we're better. And they came in and, and freaking Ray Rice took off on the first play for 80 yards in the middle and we got ourselves busted in our mouth when we should have been out there competing for a ring. You cannot under rate and overlook this team because as you guys mentioned Kareem Hunt let me back this up Cleveland's offensive line is nasty mm-hmm. right they how nasty, nasty. they're they Mick <laughs> na- Mick nasty okay? they go to McDonald's they're getting the Mick nasty all right and and that's what you want as an offensive line right so yeah and where, where I said what I said yesterday is where Cleveland is strong Dallas is weak right now and I'm not talking about mm-hmm. I'm not talking about I'm not talking about on paper. I'm talking about in general. Mm-hmm. The way Dallas has been playing in certain areas of the game, certain positions, that's where Cleveland is strong. And that's what worries me going into this game. I doubt let me be very clear. I know Heckman's gonna try to twist my words. Dallas, I feel like, is a better team. Cleveland, by the stats and by the record, Cleveland is playing better right now. Right, and let me let me give you just a little bit of information here. Hey, before 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 you uh you, you kill me here, uh, <laughs> Baker Mayfield has sixty is sixty two percent of his passes completed. Mm-hmm. Dak Prescott sixty seven. Baker Mayfield has only had to attempt eighty five passes. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> Dak Prescott has had to attempt one hundred and forty three. That's a good Cleveland point. Browns are two and one. Dallas Cowboys are one and two. Right, so when we start talking about some of these things, like Kareem Hunt, Kareem Hunt has 204 yards rushing already. Uh, Nick Chubb has 292 yards rushing already. They are running the ball. And as we talk about, I'm not going to make a comparison of Baker Mayfield to Dak. That's not what I'm doing. But what I'm saying is he's being asked to be a game manager. He's being asked to be what Russell Wilson was years ago before he before he he is who he is now. He just yeah. just don't lose the game, right? Turn around, hand the ball off to your two dogs back there. Let this old line establish a run, manage the clock, and put ourselves in, in situational football to win the game. And that's what these guys are doing. And that's why I say that these guys are a little bit dangerous right now. I think that's a great point brought up by Isaiah. The fact that early in Baker Mayfield's career as the number one overall pick and as the quarterback who's supposedly going to be the savior for this Browns franchise – there was a lot of pressure on him. There was a lot of pressure to, to perform. They they really threw him into the fire immediately. They made him throw a ton of passing attempts. And now, with the supporting cast around him, he doesn't have to have that same kind of pressure. He has an opportunity to kind of sit back and, and find his weapons and be able to go back behind what is a much improved offensive line. I know you guys are talking about Mick Nasty in terms of the, uh, the good – Part of the word, it was pretty nasty in terms of the bad part of the word for, for much of Baker Mayfield's career. That was not a good offensive line, but like you said, Jedrick Wills Jr., who's just a fantastic pickup in the draft, they got him a 10th overall this year, and he's been uh, pretty solid as the left tackle for the Browns so far. You have the other side with Conklin. You, you've shirt up the edges. The interior still has a little <laughs> bit to work on. You've got a veteran in the middle, which is nice, and you have some guys that you can rely on from a Browns offensive line perspective, and that's one of the reasons why they are the only team in the NFL with two 200-yard rushers in Nick Chubb and Kareem Hunt. But we'll have to see how the Cowboys combat that in terms of slowing them down. We're going to talk about how to slow down those receivers with a banged-up secondary. After this first break, when we come back, we'll talk about Jarvis Landry, Odell Beckham Jr., and how in the world are the Cowboys going to slow them down because they've struggled to do that so far this season. When we return here on Talking Cowboys. Since 1865, Stetson hats are American-made with pride right here in Texas. And Stetson is proud to be on the field with America's team. Want to show your Texas and team pride, too? You can. By purchasing your own Stetson, you can look just like how the flag guys do on field at every home game. Stetson hats, the official crown of all self-respecting Cowboys and your favorite football team. Get yours today at shop.dallascowboys.com or at stetson.com. Want to use what the pros use? How about the official men's skincare brand of the Dallas Cowboys? Jack Black. 
Right now, you can get the Jack Black Starter, a curated collection of Cowboys locker room favorites for just 10 bucks with free shipping. The starter includes four Jack Black skincare favorites plus a full-sized intense therapy lip balm. Go to getjackblack.com slash cowboys and use the code word TEAMJB. That's getjackblack.com slash cowboys. The Jack Black Starter, 10 bucks. Free shipping! Essilor is a proud sponsor of the Dallas Cowboys, helping fans see more and do more with our best vision solutions. Our lens technologies reveal a world more beautiful than you can imagine. For a limited time, get the Essilor Next Gen offer. When you buy the latest generation of Transitions lenses with select Essilor lenses, you can choose a second pair of clear lenses for free with qualifying frame purchases. Restrictions apply. Find a participating eye care professional by visiting EssilorUSA.com. Essilor. See more do more. We're back with a tasty treat that's sweeping airwaves and taste buds. It's new Dr. Pepper and Cream Soda. Let's take a listen. Dr. Pepper and Cream Soda's here. A new combo that's music to my ears, okay. Let's play. Cream Soda and Dr. Pepper time. Pour it in a glass of ice. Ah, music to my ears and mouth. New Dr. Pepper and Cream Soda. A delicious duet. Back to Talking Cowboys. Back here uh, for Talking Cowboys here on this Wednesday morning. Glad you're with us on DallasCowboys.com. Heck, my Harrison, really Rob Phillips, Isaiah Stanback, and I'm your host, Kyle Yeomans. Are you coming to the Cowboys game this weekend? Make sure you know before you go, wear a mask, keep distance, and be prepared for cashless transactions. Please be aware of all of the safe stadium policies prior to arriving at AT&T Stadium. Visit DallasCowboys.com slash safe stadium for details. It'll be a fun weekend at AT&T Stadium as the Cleveland Browns come to town. I will say uh, I, I wrote a, a big picture article yesterday with some of the biggest storylines surrounding this game in terms of the Browns and the Cowboys. And I There was a, a homecoming of sort for, for two players, two very key players, one of which we're talking about today. The other one we'll talk about tomorrow. But Baker Mayfield, a, a reunion with AT&T Stadium where, uh, of course, he saw some success with Oklahoma uh, at the university level. But he also won a state championship there in high school against my alma mater in Midway when I was a sophomore. He, at Lake Travis, took down our Midway Panthers 22-7 to in what was a heartbreaker at AT&T Stadium for me. So I have a personal vendetta against Baker Mayfield because of this fact and because of the fact of him beating us in the state championship game at the high school level and taking that away from me as a sophomore. But that's okay. We'll, we'll, we'll put that personal thing aside for now. The, uh, the other, Lord. the other, uh, that was deep personal. down inside. Kyle, yeah, never yeah, bring it out yeah, again. Never going to bring it back. Yeah. I'm going to put it back down there. Um, no. So the other homecoming, of course, Miles Garrett, a, a, a product of Arlington Martin high school, who is so rich in tradition in terms of the high school level and around Texas these areas a. and Texas A&M. I'll throw that in there for you, Rob, if you would like, I'll throw the Aggie stat Please. in there. I got you. But, uh, uh, but yeah, he was a five-star recruit. I looked it up yesterday. He had 39 tackles for loss and somewhere close to 27 sacks as a senior in high school, and that's just ridiculous to me. That's unbelievable. The fact that you can put that that's together. It? Yeah, that's about that's it. it. I mean, he was the number two recruit in the country behind Leonard Fournette coming out of high school whenever he committed to A&M. But uh, talking about Baker Mayfield, and I mentioned these wide receivers. He's <laughs> Got some. Uh, he's got some targets to throw the football to, nonetheless. Whenever it comes to Jarvis Landry and Odell Beckham Jr., finally those two uh, looks like starting to catch their stride a little bit. I know Jarvis Landry's kind of been dealing with a uh, a little bit of a ailing injury and a nagging injury on his side of things, but Odell Beckham Jr. has been playing well. Uh, Isaiah, whenever you look at these receivers, what is it that they bring to the table that makes them stand out as opposed to what the Cowboys have already seen on the schedule? Um, I guess there's a little bit of good and bad. Um, what the Cowboys have seen over these first three weeks is they've seen some very prominent receivers that are testing their unexperienced <laughs> DBs um, down the field. Right? They they have literally people have been blowing by um, our, our our secondary. Unfortunately, um, I don't 
foresee that with this particular group, even though Landry and especially Odell are well respected for their speed, their vertical, their vertical threat, they haven't had that many big plays, right? So as mm-hmm. I look at it, you know, Landry, Landry's long of the of the year, longest play of the year is 21 yards, and Odell's longest is 43 yards. Um, you know, Odell is only he's only caught 50 percent of his targets. Meanwhile. Landry has caught 12 out of 13 that's come his way. So as you start looking at this, you know, they're becoming more possession receivers. Yeah. Right? They're becoming more possession receivers, and that might be more of a threat to Dallas than even some of these deeper uh, really? deeper routes that we've been facing. I, I, I think so because because they're, they're completing them at a higher percentage. Right? They're completing them at a higher percentage. And you don't – when you're running the ball as efficiently as you are right now – you don't have to take those deep shots because you don't have to have those big plays, right? It's all about moving the sticks. And the way that Cleveland wins ball games right now is Cleveland plays keep away, right? They play keep away. They're not asking 85 passes through three games is not a lot of passes, yeah. right? <laughs> it's not a lot of passes at all. We almost hit that last week alone, right? <laughs> so, <laughs> so, I mean, so right now, you know, it's about them in, in game management and putting themselves in a situation. So these receivers are possession receivers in my eyes right now, regardless of all the one-hand catches that we've seen Odell made and all the stuff, that, all the dancing he does. Yeah. These guys are possession receivers, and, and we're going to have to see if we can come up there and get in these guys' face and not only one, our second is going to have to be able to make tackles, right? Mm-hmm. They're going to have to make some tackles on, on these running backs. And two, they're going to have to be patient and, and keep everything in front of them. So now, I like that you said that, Isaiah, that, that uh, o- Odell Beckham is a possession receiver. I don't think anyone has ever called OBJ a possession receiver because you know he has that big playability. But yeah. I think that that goes into how they are curing Baker Mayfield just by those short throws. But I like I like that, though. I like that for our defense. I think that Diggs, his strength is the ability to flip his hips and close on the ball. Mm-hmm. And so uh, not getting letting people get behind him. I mean, we've seen those highlights over and over with people running by our safeties and our cornerbacks. But even when you go back to last week in the Seattle game, man, they were doing what they uh, were doing to our defense with two receivers. And so, uh, look, we all of those mistakes and, and the guys that we have on the roster in the secondary, I believe they're capable this week of keeping guys in front of them, and especially if these are going to be shorter routes. But, man, the, the worry for me is at the tight end position because I feel that Austin Hooper, Hooper. Uh, against – uh, Jalen Smith, again, he has his work cut out for him. But, guys, I feel like for Jalen Smith, this is a point where he can show what all of his strengths are, especially with these guys playing the 22 personnel, having a fullback, being able to take on those isos. And I like Jalen Smith and Thomas in those situations. But you're right. You know, both of these guys, Landry, he's caught 12 of the 13 targets. That means he's pretty much money anytime you throw it to number 80. And But the guys that we have, especially with, if we're Jordan Lewis, Lewis and Trayvon Diggs, I think that this is a favorable matchup for them, especially in the short uh, possession receiver part of it. Where I worry about the Dallas Cowboys defense is the big plays, the long developing plays. Uh, that's where we've been getting gashed. So let me let me ask you, can I ask a question off of that, Kyle? Yeah. With Knowing the, how these guys run the ball, right? Uh, uh, Heck and Rob, especially knowing how these guys run the ball, knowing that Jalen Smith is aggressive and he knows that he's got to play downhill, which works to his advantage. He's a downhill player, right? So he's going to have his eyes in the backfield. Last week, if last week wasn't proof that this that these safeties have their eyes in the backfield, I don't know what is, right? Uh, Xavier Woods, you thought he was going to freaking come up there and tackle somebody from 25 yards deep. His, that's how much he was locked in on the backfield, right? So if these guys have a tendency to do that against that running in it without facing a, a, a predominantly running team, how much more so are they susceptible to those big plays that you're alluding to um, against, a, against a team like this? Well, I think I think they are until they show that they're not, you know, and, and just I'm with you guys and just w- watching them, they are more of a intermediate to short, passing game and I and I wonder if that's Kevin Stefanski like like Heck said just trying to help Baker out because I think he just snapped a an interception streak of like eight games going back to last year and he had one that Odell went in and knocked down that saved one the other last week yeah Um, yeah, so you know they're they're trying to get the ball out quickly trying to help him out and it's not the same stylistically as the Rams um, 
but they're trying, you know, use that run game to get into second and short, third mm-hmm. and short, and then uh, where you're not having to take chances down the field with the ball. But based on what you saw on film from the Cowboys last year, when you have receivers of that caliber, uh, I and Baker's got the arm to do it. I I would be surprised if they didn't test Dallas at least in a couple situations, maybe early to see uh, how they handle communication back there. That's that's the biggest thing. That's that's what caused a lot of those problems, at least in the first half. Yeah, absolutely, Rob. And, and, and Isaiah, to your question, they're going to test us. Every team oh, yeah. is going to test us oh, until yeah. we stop it. As you should. Um, but that's just not – yeah, and that's just not who we are, who they are right now. But at some point, they're going to put the play action on display and try and bomb us until we – act. they're going to play the percentages to see if we can stop it. So I expect them uh, to do that. And, and – and guys, yesterday I, w- I was talking to a hopeful first ballot Hall of Famer, Joe Thomas, offensive lineman for the Cleveland Browns, and he talked a lot about that. The Cowboys hadn't been able to, they're susceptible on the play action pa- pass, and that's a strong suit for the Cleveland Browns. So I look for them to bomb us and do those kinds of things against us uh, until we're able to stop it. We just got to show we can. Now, the ba- other thing, too, go that, for it, that's Rob. helped. Um, go ahead, Kyle. Sorry. Well, just. The other thing that's helping their offense right now is their defense and the fact that they're they're forcing so many takeaways. I mean, they put up 30-plus points the last two games, but they're starting drives deep into opposing territory. I think they had four drives against Washington that started at the 40-yard line or Mm -hmm. inside. So when that happens, you're able to really dictate what you want to do offensively, and that really helps your quarterback. So, I mean, I know we're talking about the Cowboys' defense, but – Dak's got to take care of the ball. The offense has to take care of the ball, and it would probably help them if he's not throwing 57 times a game and they're able to, to have some balance to where he's not dropping back so much. Well, and going off of that, whenever you talk about combining what Cleveland has done from a defensive standpoint and the five turnovers that they forced against Washington and the fact that the Cowboys have started six drives defensively in their own territory based off of mistakes early in the games versus Atlanta and versus Seattle. You can't have those two things combined. You can't spot any yardage, spot any points to this offense because, like you said, if they're able to dictate what they want to do in terms of running the football and then allowing it to take off the top of the defense with Baker Mayfield and these receivers, things are going to get really tough really quickly for Mike Nolan. But based off of kind of what all three of you guys said, the the answer to slow down these receivers for the Cowboys is allow the secondary to be physical. Am I hearing that right? Because right now, I think that's really kind of the strength. Trayvon Diggs coming out of Alabama, he was known as a press man coverage corner. This is a guy who likes to get physical. This is a like guy who wants to get up in your face and make things tough at the line of scrimmage. Can we expect to see that not only from Diggs, from the rest of the secondary as well, though, Isaiah? I hope so. I mean... Well, they definitely they haven't put hands on nobody this so far. Yeah, <laughs> golly, I mean, yeah, I mean, I mean that if that's your if that's what you do. Sorry, if that's what you do, then then do it. I don't care that this is the NFL. Go put hands on somebody, slap somebody in the face, especially when you're playing somebody like Odell Beckham who is not emotionally stable. Mm. Right? He's 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 just not the most emotionally intelligent individual in the league. I'm sorry, um, it, but. But you can frustrate him, right? If you get your hands on him, he's going to whine. He's going to bicker. He's going to try to talk to the referees. Get him out of his game. Landry's the more um, mature one of the two, right? He's yeah. really like the big brother of the group. Um, so that one, he might be a little bit more difficult to, to get going. You actually might piss him off, and it might actually go the opposite way for you. But as far as Odell, put hands on him all day long. You guys remember Street Fighter? Y'all remember E-Honda? Y'all need yeah. to get E-Honda all up in his chest. <laughs> <laughs> We had a Moses reference yesterday. I haven't thought about Street Fighter since 1992. I love it. Oh, that's awesome. Uh, let's go ahead and take our, our second break. Uh, on the other side of this, we're going to really kind of look at the, the battle in the trenches, which I think, along with being physical <laughs> on the outside, we have to find a way to be uh, to win the battle of the trenches. When we come back, continue on this preview of the Browns and the Cowboys here on Talking Cowboys. I'm Jay Novacek, former tight end for the Dallas Cowboys. Back in the day, 
I was the guy who always got the tough yards, and that's why I run with John Deere today. In fact, I have a John Deere 3025E tractor that can handle any yard work I need to do, even the tough yards way out back. So if you have one acre or a thousand, John Deere has the equipment that's just right for you. Visit a John Deere dealer today and run with us. We are the official tractor provider of your Dallas Cowboys. Essilor is a proud sponsor of the Dallas Cowboys, helping fans see more and do more with our best vision solutions. Our lens technologies reveal a world more beautiful than you can imagine. For a limited time, get the Essilor Next Gen offer. When you buy the latest generation of Transitions lenses with select Essilor lenses, you can choose a second pair of clear lenses for free with qualifying frame purchases. Restrictions apply. Find a participating eye care professional by visiting EssilorUSA.com. Essilor. See more. Do more. We're back with a tasty treat that's sweeping airwaves and taste buds. It's new Dr. Pepper and Cream Soda. Let's take a listen. Dr. Pepper and Cream Soda's here. A new combo that's music to my ears, okay? Let's play. Cream Soda and Dr. Pepper time. Pour it in a glass of ice. Ah, music to my ears and mouth. New Dr. Pepper and Cream Soda. A delicious duet. Want to use what the pros use? How about the official men's skincare brand of the Dallas Cowboys, Jack Black? Right now, you can get the Jack Black Starter, a curated collection of Cowboys locker room favorites for just 10 bucks with free shipping. The starter includes four Jack Black skincare favorites plus a full-sized intense therapy lip balm. Go to getjackblack.com slash cowboys and use the code word TEAMJB. That's getjackblack.com slash cowboys. The Jack Black Starter, 10 bucks, free shipping. Back to talking Cowboys. Just a couple minutes left here of the Wednesday edition of Talking Cowboys. Glad you're with us. And once again, whether you're watching from home or cheering from the stands with Essilor lenses, you'll see every exciting play. Book an appointment at your local Essilor experts and find the perfect Essilor lenses for you. See more, do more Essilor. Kyle Yeomans, Heckma Harrison, Isaiah Stanback. And Rob Phillips and Heckman, you mentioned you had this conversation with uh, one of the all-time greats in terms of offensive linemen and Joe Thomas. He was with the Browns for so long, had that 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 consecutive snap streak and game streak, and just a, an all-around impressive career from his standpoint. And uh, of course, a gold jacket is coming his way soon. But whenever you had that conversation. Did he by any chance mention the name Alden Smith? Because, my goodness, Alden Smith's been incredible for this Cowboys defensive line. I went back and watched again yesterday, and I specifically wanted to see 58. And whether or not he was uh, in part in one of the three sacks that he had against Seattle on Sunday, he's just a game wrecker, and it's something that the Cowboys really wanted to see from Demarcus Lawrence, but at least they're getting it from that side of things. Yeah, he, he talked about how physical, uh, a physical specimen Alden Smith is for being able to be away from the NFL for five years and come back and play at the level that he's playing. He's like, man, even with all my Iron Man consecutive uh, streak that I had in, in Cleveland, I couldn't even imagine doing pregame warm-ups right now, let alone play a full <laughs> game. But he... He basically talked about Alden Smith and the way how powerful he is at the point of attack and the way that he uses his hands. Obviously, we're all, you know, uh, patting him on the back for his ability to get to the quarterback. But his strong suit is his run defense. He's yeah. one of the best run defenders uh, that we have. But also, guys, it, when we say this is a good get right game. For our defense, our defense, our team in general. Look at our the guys that we have on our defensive line. If you just Everson Griffith, he couldn't have played for for uh, Zimmer in Minnesota if he was not stout in the run. And he's been known, and that's his reputation as a run stuffer. Uh, Don Terry Poe, the same, a guy that is known around the league as a run stuffer. These guys get an opportunity versus a Cleveland Browns offensive line that. Man, these guys are, are really good. And, and I, to Isaiah's point, they are on a roll and they're making Nick Chubb look good. But I have to circle the matchup between Alden Smith and the rookie, uh, Willis. And I wish I could do that. Uh, what's the TNT Kenny run to the board? I'd be pigeon toed <laughs> and not need running to the board. Just give you an illustration of it. But I think that's where the matchup is. And I think the rookie really is going to have a trial by fire, fire because Alden Smith is going to be covering him for most of the game. And Montez Sweat last week for the for the uh, Washington team 
really gave him fits. So mm -hmm. that's where a lot of our pressure is going to come from. But I look for our defense. This is a game that these guys can get muddy and physical. Well, they're at AT&T, so we're not going to be getting muddy. But they can get physical with this offensive line. And I want to come back on Monday and say this is a game that our defensive line took to the Cleveland Browns. I love that. I mean, no game is yeah, a, is, I mean, is truly a, a get-right game in the NFL, but if you look at the strengths in terms of that defensive line, it does align with the fact of stopping the run and, and slowing down guys like Kareem Hunt and Nick Chubb. It's going to be tough because both of them are receiving threats out of the backfield, but Rob, as you look at this matchup in the trenches, how imperative is it that the Cowboys still get in the backfield and really wreak havoc on not only the two backs, but also Baker Mayfield to make mistakes? Oh, it's critical every week for sure. Um, and heck, hit on it. You know, that they, they, they want to run the ball. They've got some nasty interior linemen. Teller's a guy they run behind. I believe he's their right guard. And uh, But it, against the pass, you know, I think they're trying to get the ball out of Baker's hands early, though. So it might be more difficult than, than what we saw in the Seattle game with, with Russ, who likes to hold it, likes to buy time. Um, but, yeah, it, it's got to be more than just Alden Smith. And mm -hmm. like you guys said, he's been – He's 285, but he doesn't look it. But he plays like it because he's so powerful the way he can drive guys back in addition to being able to bend around the edge. And uh, like Heckma said, Willis had a couple false starts too, I believe, in that game. So that is that is a matchup to watch. And I just wonder, you know, you know, can they get DeMarcus into more of a, a place where he can have more than 30 snaps because they need more from him. You know, everybody's talking about his production. And, and yes, they need more production from him. He's got to... They need him on the field more than half the game. So that's that's a big one, too. Isaiah? Uh, I just, I mean, I look at this as an opportunity. Um, if, as, as, a, as an athlete, as a competitor, you know, if somebody's telling you, oh, you're, you're doing this, or you're not doing this, and, you know, you're really kind of sucking in this area, they're calling you out, right? They're, they're, calling, they're, they're pulling your man card, right? They're just pulling your man card like this and just holding it in front of you. And... I think that's what's being said and done to the Cowboys defensive line right now, and for good reason. Because I, if I'm if I'm if I'm correct, I believe we're giving up around five yards per carry over these three games. Over these first three games, we're giving up around five yards per carry. And, and this team is coming in. Kareem Hump's averaging five point two per carry. Nick Chubb's averaging five point seven per carry. So. Um, we have an opportunity to go out there and prove everybody wrong and say, hey, we have fixed this defensive line problem. We do have some dogs up here, and we're not going to go out here and get pancaked, as Heck said in the break, uh, and not, not going to become the international house of pancakes. You know what I'm saying? So, <laughs> that, so we, we have to make sure that you know that these guys show up. Man, there's, there's, there's pride that comes with playing this game. There's pride with being a player, and you, you have to refuse to not get done in and not get punked when you, when you step out there and play against other grown men. Cowboys defense giving up 127 yards uh, on average per game on the ground. And then most of that really came from that first game against the, the Los Angeles Rams. Other than that, they've kind of at least slowed down Chris Carson for the Seattle side and then Todd Gurley for Atlanta. But it'll be an interesting matchup. Those are two backs of the backfield. you got to have to, uh, have to get some hands on and, and find a way to get past this revamped offensive line from the Cleveland perspective. But we'll continue previewing this matchup. We'll th flip things around. Tomorrow, how can Miles Garrett be stopped by this offensive line, and what specific challenges does the defensive line from Cleveland present the offense? We'll talk about that tomorrow and see if Dak Prescott can continue putting up big numbers but actually get the win this time here on Sunday. But that's going to do it here for Talking Cowboys. Thanks for listening here over the last 45 minutes for Isaiah Stanback, for Heckma Harrison, and for the Cowboys insider Rob Phillips. I'm Kyle Yeoman saying so long. Thanks for listening here on DallasCowboys.com. This has been a production of DallasCowboys.com and the Dallas Cowboys Football Club. How about that?